GeoTrig lesson 12. Today we're going to talk about angles and their diagonals of polygons. So maybe before we get into that first note on there, we probably should back up and say, wait a minute, I've heard polygon before. I think back in lesson one, what is a polygon? Someone's going to say a triangle, someone will say a square. Sure, those are examples of polygons. What is by definition, make a polygon. What would be a polygon? Sure. Like a shape where all the sides meet up, basically. Okay, where the sides will, it meet, all meet up. Yeah. Which basically means that the shape is closed. Closed. It took a while last hour to come up with that. The fact that it comes down to simple, closed shape. Straight sides, right? So therefore. A circle is not a polygon. The smallest shape you can make is a triangle with straight edges. That's closed. This is not considered, even if that was so straight. Right? That's not considered to be a polygon until we close it. Is that okay? Now, that's again an example of a polygon. Now we can go into our notes. The first note there says, in polygons, the number of angles is equal to the number of sides. Well, just take a look at our example. And this is just an example, but it works for all of them. I have one, two, three, four angles, or uh, angles or vertices. And I have one, whoops, one, two, three, four. I have four sides. They are equal. Okay? Now, we also have something here that's called convex, and we also have ones that are concave. So going back to that lesson one again, what does it mean to be convex? Angel. Okay, he says for convex, their side goes into the shape. Mm, that would be con. Oh, concave. You said I heard concave first. Convex is when all your vertices point out or away. Concave, one or more of them get pointed in. Okay, so in towards the middle. Remember to be convex, any two points connected inside the shape, you never leave the shape, right? If you're concave, you would have to cross outward, or potentially could cross outward, and then back in. So, we have a convex polygon, as stated here, that looks like a triangle. I have an I and an E in there at the angle spot. One's considered interior, the other one is considered exterior. Because convex polygons have both interior and exterior angles. Now, it's kind of interesting because it matters how you want to look at this. So if you're not inside, you're outside. Kind of makes sense, right? So the interior angle is here. Why does it necessarily say that that's my exterior angle? To me, it's, just, it's outside. But that's not the only thing outside, is it? Actually, to me... All of that is outside. The interior plus all of the outside equals what? 360. 360. Can you guys see that? All the way on the outside here forms most of the circle, and it's just missing the interior angle. Boom. So the exterior angles are formed by extending one side of a convex polygon at the vertex. So that's different now, because now it's saying that if I take, I'm going to take that half circle out, that if I take my bottom base, we'll call, and I keep extending it indefinitely out of the shape, or away from the shape, they're saying that this is the exterior angle. So for us, that's what we're going to use. What do you think I plus E equals? 180. 180. So 
interior plus the exterior will equal 180. Well, could I, wait, now this is interesting. Could I, by chance, extend this one out that way? And then wouldn't this be considered any? It's kind of upside down to you guys, so maybe I'll change that. That's E. But doesn't that make sense that that's also an exterior angle? But isn't that the same exact E because I never changed? But also because these angles are the same because they are vertical angles, and vertical angles are congruent. But that means also that this is an I, and I plus E plus I plus E will equal what again? 360. 360. So obviously there's a huge connection going on there. Can you guys agree with this? Okay? Are we good? Yes. Makes sense. We're turning the page. Um, okay. Huge note with a lot of stars, so it must be somewhat important. The sum of the measures of an interior angle and the exterior angle is 180. Hey, we already talked about that. Because they form a straight line. The second one, very important. The sum of the measures of the exterior angles of any convex polygon is 360 degrees. Now this is a little harder to demonstrate on the paper first. So I'm going to pause the video and then kind of show you on that particular object. So to use this diagram to do the exact same thing I just did in front of everyone. So if I start here. I'm going to walk out this far, or le looking in that direction, right? And I'm going to turn there. That's a bad arrow. Would you guys agree I turned up? And then I got to here, and then I turned again, and then I turned again, and then turned again, and then one last time, turned again. I basically, my gaze of my sight, right, or my arms, went in a full circle. Even though my body or my feet created this pattern of a pentagon. That's why the sum of the measures of any, let me say it again, the sum of any convex polygon, the exterior angles, will equal 360. I don't care how complex, bless you, of a convex polygon you make it, bless you, you walk around it, you're eventually going to be making a full circle. Questions? There's going to be a question on your quiz, in your homework, what is the sum of the exterior angles of a 14-sided polygon? Answer? 360. Boom. Done. You got the credit. You like that. Of course, then they're going to go back and say, well, what is the sum of the interior angles? Ooh, now that one is a little bit tougher. The only one, I think, maybe two, the only two objects where I think you guys would definitely say, I know there are this many degrees inside the polygon. Which one? A triangle. A triangle, because a triangle has... 180 degrees. And the other one where I think, yeah, most of us would be able to say, yes, I know this one too. A three-sided and a four-sided. Four four-sided object has how many degrees inside? Think of a square or a rectangle. 90, 90, 90, 90, 360. So, but wait a minute. Let me ask you this. This is a rectangle. How many degrees are you say in there? 360. How many triangles can I make? Two. What's two times 180? 360. Can we use that same idea to make triangles to figure out how many degrees are in a convex polygon? The first one is a regular old pentagon. The next one is a I would almost call that a regular hexagon. 
What was the difference between a regular hexagon and a hexagon? When you add the regular in front, what does it mean? Normal, basic, it's everywhere. Found no, not normal, basic. I love what you're saying. All sides are equal. All sides are equal and all the angles. angles are equal. Okay? So, the first one obviously is not a regular pentagon, but we still can work with it. I just took that rectangle before and I cut it at the vertices. Well, if I do the same thing here, would you guys agree that I can do this and do that? How many triangles did I make? Three, three. three triangles. So three triangles times 180 is equal to what? 540 degrees. That's how many degrees are in a pentagon. Any pentagon. Do the same thing for the next one. Notice what I didn't do. I didn't jump to the next vertice and draw more triangles. Don't do that. Please don't. How many triangles can we make here? One, two, three, four. And so that's four times 180, which is 720 degrees. Hey, I'm liking that. Oh, geez. What is that next thing? Ten. Ten sides. Anybody got the name for that one? Decagon. Okay. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You guys agree with this or no? You guys see eight triangles. Okay. Oh, wait. Hold on, Sawyer. Hold on. What's eight times 180? 1440 degrees. Uh, there must be a connection. Sawyer's already got it. We'll let you guys think on this. The first one had five vertices, the next one had six vertices, and ten vertices. How do you go from five to 540, six to 720, ten to 1440, one to 180, no, three to 180, four to 360, right? We already talked about those. What's the connection? Sawyer, what's your connection? Uh, two less than the number of sides, and then times up by 180. Yeah. What if I told you there was n number of sides? I can take n minus 2 and times it by 180. And that would equal the number of interior degrees. Number of interior degrees. It's n minus 2 times 180. So if I ask you for a dodecagon, ooh, what is a dodecagon? 12. 12. It's a 12. 12 minus 2? And 10 times 180? 1,800 degrees. The guys, the way this works is that I think everybody should see that this angle right here is being cut into two separate angles. Yes? There are two different triangles. But I'm using this angle and that angle. That's why at my vertices, so that's why the, all the triangles get added up. There's no vertice at any of these triangles that's not being used. Like this one has three angles. But all three of those are added together to make up the larger angle. So that's why it works. Next one. I want to turn it around and not talk about angles. I want to talk about the other thing inside. And that other thing is diagonals. How many diagonals does a convex polygon have? Now here's the thing, what's a diagonal? 
a diagonal connects two vertices inside. Guys, this connection from this vertice to this vertice does not count as a diagonal. Diagonals have to cross on the inside. So this is five sides. I think everybody would agree. It's the same picture as last time. Let's take a look. One, two, three, four, five. There were five. So? Oh, I'm guessing it's the exact same. Okay. So, Mikey says the next one has six sides, so it should have six diagonals. Okay, let's test this theory. One, two, three. Okay, moving on to the next one. Four, five, six, oh, seven, eight, nine. Nine, you guys see it? I'll bring it back. That one right there. I got that one. What am I missing? There should be nine. Guys, you can't repeat one that's already been done, but it looks like every vertice has how many lines connecting? Three. Three. So make sure you each one has three. Then you'll find out if you did something wrong. That means there are three other vertices that each one can make a connection to. Yes? So, six sides equals nine diagonals. So, not the same. Next one, ten. I messed this one up last time. I skipped a vertice completely. I had to go back and put them on. Okay, I'm going to try to change colors as I go here as well. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You got seven? No. Well, I mean, so far. Move on. This is the one I skipped last time, so now it's eight. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Did you miss one going straight down? Oh, fourteen. So fourteen? Yes. Okay, what color? Blue? Okay, so I can't go back to that first one. So now we're up to what? Fourteen? So fifteen? 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So up to 20 now. Um, let's use orange. Can't do the first two. So 21, 2, 3, 4. Five, twenty-five. Six. Twenty-seven. Twenty-eight. Twenty-nine. Gray. Um thirty. 31, 32, oh. yellow, 33, 34, uh oh, there should be 35, there should be 35, no, the last one's at the outside, the one on the bottom, Okay, we found the last one. Last one's right here. 
to to there. I got this thing sideways. Thirty five. Ten sides equals thirty five. That's a that's cool. So What's the connection? Do I multiply by 2, subtract 5? What do I do? I, I don't know. Multiply by 180, square it? Oh, there's a connection. I don't know if too many of us would be able to figure this out just in the short period of time. So what if I said it is n times n minus 3 all over 2? So, I mean, we would eventually come up with that on our own. Number of diagonals. So n times n minus 3 over 2. Let's see if it works. 5 minus 3 is? 5 minus 3 is 2. Times 5. 10 divided by 2? 5. 6 minus 3? 3. 3 times 6? Divide by 2? Nine. Ten minus three Seven. times te ten. Seventy divided by two. Thirty-five. It worked out. And your homework lesson twelve, page ninety-five, one, four through seven, ten, and twenty-two. Have a great day. You go back to like just.